How did we get this tea to change from blue to purple? What is this tea exactly? In this next tea experiment, we're gonna explore this magic color changing drink, learn why it's not actually a type of tea and how to get it to change colors. First of all, let's start with a definition of terms. To be considered a tea, it has to come from the tea plant, Camellia sinensis. This means that things like chamomile, peppermint, and hibiscus aren't actually teas. They can be referred to as tisans or herbal infusions. This may sound like we're splitting hairs here, but to learn about tea, I think it's important to first learn what it is and what it's not. As you explore tea further, you will learn that just by growing and processing the tea in different ways, you can get thousands of different varieties from a single plant. So this is actually a tisan, but it's often called butterfly pea tea or blue tea. It's made from the bright blue flowers of the butterfly pea plant, a plant native to South and Southeast Asia. These flowers are rich in anthocyanins, which are what give other plants like blueberries their distinct blue or purple color. These have been used as a natural dye for centuries and are still used in things like mixed drinks, cocktails, and lattes. I wanted to experiment with this tisan a bit because I often see it being used in different teas and I wanted to see what it tastes like and how to get it to change colors. First, to start off with the basics, I laid out some of the flowers and grabbed a small handful to put into the teapot. I then added some near boiling water and let it sit for about one minute. As it turns out, this was actually overkill and the color was almost too blue. The color almost looks black because you can't see the light through it at all. This likely means I used too much of it, so I tried again with less flowers and a lower temperature water. What I ended up finding is that by using approximately one tablespoon of the flowers, you get a nice infusion. What really surprised me here is how strong these pigments are. If you use a generous amount of flowers you get a dark blue infusion in the first brewing all the way up to the fifth brewing so not only is the color strong but it retains its color for many different infusions i finally got a color i was satisfied with and decided to move on to the next step i heard that by adding lemon juice you could change the color from blue to purple and after doing a bit of research i learned that this has to do with the acidity because the anthocyanins react to changes in ph if you introduce something acidic like lemon juice to the mixture it will change from blue to purple i only tried this with lemon juice but i'm sure it works for other acidic juices as well. This ended up taking much more lemon juice than I had anticipated to get the color change I wanted, and after running out of lemons to squeeze, I eventually just bought some lemon juice. After practicing a few times, I think I was beginning to get the color change down. You don't want the liquid to be too blue because then it will take too much to get it to turn colors. If you use less flowers in your infusion, it should be much easier to get it to change with the lemon juice. I have also seen some people make blue lattes out of this tisan, so I wanted to try this out as well. The color change on this one was truly mesmerizing. But now comes to the important part. What do all these drinks taste like? The blue drink on its own really tastes like nothing. It has a slight earthiness to it, but that's about it. This is both a good and a bad thing. It's bad in the sense that you can't really enjoy the drink on its own, but it's also good in the sense that you can add it to a lot of different drinks without altering the flavor. For example, if you drink lemon water in the morning, you can just pour some of this tisan in there to get some added color in your day. This may also be a fun way to get kids interested in different types of herbal concoctions, and for that reason, I like these flowers. If you're trying to make a latte, you'll definitely want to add some other ingredients to it, otherwise it will just taste like oat milk. Not that there's a problem with that. So the positive takeaways from this experiment is that you can make this color change at home with normal everyday ingredients, but the downside is that it doesn't really taste so good. Compared to real teas like the Japanese green teas we usually use in these experiments, these drinks really have no flavor to them. While we are naturally drawn to things that are more colorful, this may be a lesson that that's not always better tasting. I hope you've all enjoyed this tea experiment. It can definitely be a lot of fun to play around with, but if you're drinking tea for the taste, I would recommend looking at green teas, black teas, or oolongs instead. It would really mean a lot to us if you could subscribe and stay tuned for future tea experiments. We also have plenty of other tea videos on our channel if you want to learn more about where tea is grown, how it's made, and how to prepare it. If you have any questions or if you have any ideas for future tea experiments, please be sure to let us know in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you next time.